Welcome to the Ethnic Podcast. Uh, I'm Sindra Hopla. Uh, with me today, I have three smart guys uh, to discuss today's topic: hacker schools versus universities. Do we need both? Why are they popping up around Barcelona, around Europe, or around the world? And 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 the future? What's what's in it for the future uh, of education for developers? Uh, so to give their insights today, we have uh, Marc Allier. He's a podcaster and a professor at uh, UPC. Uh, one of the universities in Barcelona, producing hundreds of young developers every year. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much. Uh, on the other side of the table, we have uh, Marc Collado, director of Hacker School Iron Hack in Barcelona. Welcome. Thanks for inviting us. And last but not least, we have Arol Vignolas with Codeworks, a fairly new hacker school here in Barcelona. Good to have you with us. Yeah, thank you very much for inviting us. So, uh, to start off, uh, only a few years ago, universities had the monopoly on ed educating developers. Uh, and uh, if you wanted to be a developer, you, you had to go through a university program or you had to teach yourself, basically. Well, that, that's absolutely not true. Oh. Absolutely not true. Uh, in, the, in the 80s and in the 90s, uh, there were in Barcelona a few coding uh, schools. Uh, one, for instance, was uh, really famous, was called Byte, and we had uh, a very few, uh, 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 some schools. It, it were mm, correlated with uh, the demand of developers in Barcelona, but, uh, but what we have, uh, especially, uh, development was done in things like COBOL and things like uh, Clip and C and, and Pascal, and we had schools uh, outside of the university teaching how to, how to code. Uh, it was not systematized like, uh, like right now, the demand was not high, high but, was, but in, in those days uh, development was really well paid because there were really few de developers and, the, the, um, and computer science was, uh, com uh, computers were entering in the, all the fields. So when you uh, enter in a computer, with a computer into, in, in a company, the, the, the amount of increase, uh, improvement in per performance was outstanding. So the, the developer and the, the guy or the, or the woman who was able to, to use that tool, uh, it, it, it provided a lot, uh, a huge added value. And then we had, the university who started uh, in the beginning, the 80s, we didn't have a degree program, we have a master's program. Then we, uh, when we took uh, ma ma mathematics degrees and physicians, uh, de de um, uh, degrees in, phys in physics and uh, industrial engineers, and then we teach them computer science. Mm -hmm. It was in the, in the mid 80s where we got the first degrees uh, engineers uh, engineers in, in computer science. And I guess you can say that uh, the last year's demand has, has risen a lot in, in, in the industry and that's what's causing now a lot of the, the hacker schools to, to, to pop up uh, around Barcelona. Uh, one of those schools is is Iron Hack. Uh, you're not only in Barcelona but in, in Madrid and, and also in Miami. Uh, how, how are you doing this differently from, from the universities? Can you tell a bit, Mark? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think the main difference here is that uh, university is a system that it's really embedded in society in a way. So as we were like talking before, I mean, incentives are not there in order to provide this value in new jobs that are being created in the market. And the way we work, it's, I think it's different, right? I mean. We try to deeply understand what the industry demands right now and which positions they cannot fill, like from the usual channels. And then we, go, we work backwards and then we try to provide these skills to, uh, in order to employ these people. So I think that, uh, yeah, sorry, the mic. So um, I think that, like, or I don't know, our obsession is always like this employ like it's employment rate, like to keep it up, to like put through our programs all the people and at the end getting a job. So we have this job assistance at the end. So it's not like just uh, teaching for the sake of teaching. So we don't see it as education, I don't know, an end by itself. Like, I don't know, you are 18, uh, you're 18, and you know, what do you do? Okay, I, I go to university because uh, it's what I have, I'm supposed to do, right? So we try to 
get like this, uh, we detach this, and we see education as a medium to achieve something. And but this, this uh, hacker schools, both you at Iron Hack, but also at CodeWorks, uh, you're, you're not giving them a full degree. This is a three month program. Yeah. So, what can you give uh, a person, an aspiring developer, in, in, in three months? Yeah, well, well, it's like, okay, the degree is, is a title, okay? Um, I think we have to focus more on, on what uh, the different type of studies uh, are giving to the student. And, okay, the university, uh, in a personal perspective, I spent, actually, it was a five years course, and I spent seven years, because uh, I was working uh, since the first year. And I remember the day that I would like to um, count the credits in the university um, uh, when I was working, and I, in the first year, I, 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 I went to the, uh, I don't know how to say it, but at the studies, it's like... He's the headmaster. Yeah, he's the headmaster. Mm. And I say to him that I was starting um, working in a company, in a developing company from the first year, and then uh, he said to me that this is not recommendable at all. And, okay, I was, I was uh, good at a study uh, at that time, but I was, I, I wanted to practice, to practice um, uh, while I was in the university. So I, find, I found out that in my time in the university, I find myself like a maker, and the university uh, went um, um, bring myself into the um, maker thing, okay, I, I, I was programming in there, but also with the so theoretical things that maybe I was not interested about. Mm -hmm. okay. So, I, I would like to intervene yeah. uh, and, and, and say same something. First, we are, uh, I think that we, we should be really clear about what we're talking about. We're talking about training or we're talking about education? Because uh, I understand that the bootcamp is a really useful tool because we need, uh, in one moment in time, we need uh, some companies that need quickly, in three months, six months, they need developers they, uh, to, to be coding and, and building things, actual things that are going to work using a defined technology, and they need training on that technology. And, and, it's, and it's a must to have this kind of service. Because if we have... Uh, for instance, now comes uh, for, uh, comes uh, iOS 10, and uh, there are I don't know how many startups in Barcelona working uh, uh, in iOS development, and they will need all their apps to be updated to iOS 10. So maybe we can provide with a, a, a crash course in 30 days or two months in iOS 10, iOS 10 and the new features and, 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 and to know especially how to port and take advantage of the new features and understand what they can do with the new features of iOS 10. And then we need that and we need it now. And this is training. The problem is that we have also education. And education is about uh, building a person who has a lot of skills, a lot of skills like able to learn, able to think uh, in a critical way, to uh, communicate, to relate to others, to solve problems like, okay, I need to pass this course and this professor is a jerk. How do I do that? Uh, um, it, it, and there are a lot of ways. You, you can cheat, you can study more, you can, you can look for uh, previous exams, you can you can do a lot of things to pass. If you solve the problem, you solve the problem. So we have education and training. The problem that we have is that training, by its definition, is something really specialized. And education, I think, that we need to teach persons that are able to adapt, especially now. Because 20 years ago, when you went to the university, you had access to knowledge. And knowledge was in only in the university and only in the library. And the way to access the contents in the, in the library is the methodology that you are going to learn in the university. But now, knowledge is on the internet, and you have Google, and we will have assistants, we will have Cortana, we will have Siri, we will have a lot of things. What we need to do is to be able to ask the right questions. 
and we, do, we, we don't understand and we don't have a good education, we'll not be able to ask this, uh, this, um, these questions. But you, you feel like, like you're educating students in the right way? Now right comes now? the problem. Now comes the problem. Because in the university where I work, the problem is that the teachers, the professors, are promoted are promoted and are they are they are uh, co you get a tenure in the university and you are promoted in the in the university if you are a good researcher, not if you are a good teacher and not if you are a outstanding professional with a huge huge exper experience in the in the um, in the in companies. There are a few new, uh, private universities that you get there by doing that, but it's rare. It's really rare to find a professor that had, that had his own company like I did in the 90s. It's really rare. Only maybe 2% of the professors. The rest will be professors that they ended his, uh, their degree, they did a master's degree, they did a PhD, they did a postdoc, and they, and they published a lot of papers, and they got a really good evaluation, and they became professors. And they are good scientists, and what they are is in researchers specialize in fields of research. And what we get in the engineering schools is that we don't have, have this generalized teaching. We have also specialized teaching when we have new, new uh, study plans which are being negotiated according to how are going to um, respect the balance of power between departments in our universities. You have these departments, and we know about this, so this is really important to be there. It's not about what's in the, what the companies need. And I am a researcher, and, I, and if I'm doing research in, I don't know, I'm didactive uh, databases, maybe this is something really important that I have to teach to my, to my students, even if nobody uses that in the companies. So we have this big problem because all the incentives in the university are towards a specialization and this specialization is not geared up to cre the creation of companies and then we have people who know really well things about science and research and they, know they don't have this wide education. So, so and, and then we have, we go to the companies and we have more more training. We have more training. In, in the US, for instance, in Germany, in Germany, uh, as you may know, when students finish high school, they are encouraged to have a year when they work in, in social endeavors and they grow as a person and then they go to the university. So wh why do so many people choose to, to attend these, these, uh, these hacker schools? Is it, is it because uh, university is not delivering on what, what they promise or uh, can you yeah, call yeah, it that I mean, yeah, There are two debates here. I mean, first of all, like the degree versus job uh, tension here. That, I mean, the moment everybody has a degree, the value of a degree like leans toward zero. I mean, this I mean it makes sense, right? I mean, if uh, in the twenties, if you are I don't know, uh, if you are a medical degree and you are a doctor, you're really well paid. Uh, the same happens. Hey, Alex, same happened like with engineers in the fifties. Uh, but right now, if everybody like has a has a paper that says that the journalist, I don't know, uh, psychologist, whatever. I mean, the the value of this de the value of this degree like goes towards zero. So the thing is that the difference that, that what we try to provide here, because I don't know, I'm an engineer myself. I went through a five years of engineering which I'm not even sure that provided this transversal education. No, it didn't. It didn't. Because, because when, when, when I was like, at the end of, the, at the end of, the, of my career, I was like a perfect useless. Like, I, did, I, I didn't know, like, I, didn't, I was not able to create anything, like, yeah, by, but, by myself. Yeah, but uh, how was your learning curve? When you, when you left the university and you have to start doing things, how was your learning yeah, curve? I'm, I mean, I'm not sure because I, I cannot compare with myself without a degree, but I don't know, I knew plenty of things like how like, I don't know, gas like, uh, gas, like goes through a pipe or I don't know how electricity works and that's fine. Like you walk in this, down the street and you are like, I don't know, you're happy about it. Uh, your mother is happy about it because it tell, tells like your neighbor that uh, her son is like an engineer. But I don't know. Um, I don't think. I don't think it helps that much in order to 
start a company, for example. I wanted to start a company. I didn't even know what a PNL was. I think a PNL it's something that everybody should know. And I get out of the, like industrial engineering, and I didn't even know what a PNL was. And I, it was really, it wasn't really simple. I mean, I, I learned that really fast. Yeah, I, absolutely. I, I had but to say, I had to say the but very because same I was experience. incentivized to to learn that, right? But uh, I have the stance that I was in the university for five years, uh, not sure what I was doing there. Like as you said, like going, uh, like sh getting shortcuts, like to get these teachers uh, a signature, or whatever, yeah. right? Maybe a good metaphor is like if you you're in the, in the university and you're making bodybuilding. You, you're training, you're, you're, you're getting fit, and then you don't know how to fight, <laughs> but you're very fit. And, and, uh, and for instance, I was in a, in, in a gym, and, we had, uh, and I was doing uh, taekwondo and karate back then, uh, and then one day came this, this guy, it was, it was a giant, it was a, 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 a 6.8 guy, really fit, really muscular, he didn't know anything about karate, anything, but in six months, of training, he won the Catalan Championship in heavyweight karate uh, Kyushinkai. I fought with him. At, at, I, I was fighting for uh, with him for ten minutes, and I hit him like a dozen times. Uh, and, and with what punch he threw me two meters away, literally. I was woo, rolling like uh, like Jackie Chan when he gets hit by by a giant. Obviously. And because he was really fit, he, he was really in connection with his body, and he learned to karate really, uh, really fast. The problem is, are we training? Are we really getting fitter? And uh, and and in the university, we are really specialized. But my problem uh, right now is, if we are not providing in the university a, a general education, we don't not providing fit fit engineers in all senses, able to communicate, to collaborate, to know math, to know how to solve problems, know how to learn things, how to find information. And if we're not providing this kind of people, and then, so we, we provide people specialized in knowing how to make uh, electrical circuits and how to um, design databases or make the wonderful recursive algorithms to, uh, or know some um, technique of AI, for instance. It's what you can learn in the, our university. And then you only learn through things like boot camps, which are essential. What kind of city are we going to become? Are we going to go, uh, become San Francisco? Are we going to become Bangalore? Because in Bangalore, they know, okay, you need to do this task is really well defined. Here's your framework, here are your tools, these are your inputs, and these are the outputs that you're going to get. And then you have these guys in India who are really proficient, proficient in that, they get the training and they get to work and they're really efficient doing that. That's a very interesting And the, and yeah. the best guys and the rounded guys in India, they go to San Francisco. That is very interesting. And yeah, but uh, we, we, nor the other are the solution, right? Because yeah, I mean, right, uh, right. The, the way it established, and, and it goes back to incentives. Like, mm. Uh, mm. as he told before, it was a great point, I think. Like, uh, if you go to university when you are 18, but you go there because you are told to, because you, uh, I don't know, because it, it's what you, you should do, because everybody does that. And I don't know, you look around, oh man, I mean, everybody's going to university, to sh so do I, right? So uh, you go there, but you go through really five valuable years of, of your existence, and, and they're, they're gone, because I mean, you were you're there, but I don't know, maybe your head was in another place, and, yeah. and maybe it was not the right time maybe for you. Maybe you should travel or and exactly, work there in the There are other means or, to get yeah, to this transversal yeah. universe, yeah. education, yeah, because right? Because they are, they are, they are, now we have knowledge is not locked in the, in the university. Exactly, but w w just one, one, one quick remark, that's the, every single person that goes through the boot camp, every single one knows exactly, like they know really clear what they want. I mean, once they want to become an entrepreneur, another one wants, uh, I don't know, a job in tech, another one, uh, I don't know, to understand this mar and better like how to market this product through non-conventional channels. So everybody has a clear goal of what they want. And I think that they are there because they want to. And they have a, a great incentive to be there and to progress towards, yeah. the, towards the course. Yeah, I mean, yeah. actually, uh, I met a guy that come from um, a culinary school from San Francisco. And uh, he, he was um, a workmate for me. And 
He, I, I met uh, him last week, uh, since one year uh, without seeing him, and he uh, was um, creating his career now. He attended to a three-month um, uh, code school there in San Francisco. He came uh, back uh, to work here in Barcelona for, for a half a year, and then uh, now he's working in Dublin. And in Dublin, now he's aware that he has to build up his career, about building up his knowledge uh, with more um, more um, software architecture or uh, concepts like this that maybe uh, are not uh, are not given that deeper in code school. Uh, okay, we are trying to, but that the students are know that they have to build his career because they are so engaged people and they attend to the to the code to the to our code school for this for getting a career in a fast pace in a very fast pace and he kn they, they know how to build uh, their careers and we need to to present uh, yeah. Alessandro uh, Sanardi uh, he's also with uh, with codeworks uh, founder and, and director of, of Codeworks CEO, in Barcelona. Yes. Yeah, CEO, yeah. yeah. Uh, pre a fairly new uh, hacker uh, school in, in Barcelona, I have to say. And uh, uh, welcome. Thanks. First of all, uh, great to have you with us. Uh, Thanks for organizing this. And uh, now, now that you're here, uh, we're talking about um, how prepared. Uh, a student can be, or a student after attending a, a hacker school, how how, how uh, ready is he to to go into a startup, for example, and and you know uh, take his skills and then really be helpful? Yeah. Um, sorry. Uh, can you can you give me again a, a little round of introduction? Uh, of course. With, well, I know Mark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mark is. Ironhack Mark is Ironhack. Mark from the UPC and Musega Lapuma. Mark as well. Yeah, no, Mark. Mark. Mark as well. Okay, okay. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So I was I was listening to what uh, Mark was saying a moment ago, uh, and he made this example. I think it was pretty interesting uh, when he was saying, "Do we want a city that is San Francisco, or do we want a city that's Bangalore?" Uh, well. Um, We're in the middle. <laughs> We're in the middle yeah, of the way. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, what is what is interesting in, in this? We take it just as a as a well, let's say as an idea to to talk about a topic. Uh, I think Bangalore and San Francisco are historically two very different cities, and we're not um, saying like one is better, one is worse. You know, it's it's different situations. Um, in terms of uh, of what he was saying. I think it's interesting that actually um, San Francisco, which I think you were depicting, if I get it right, as a, as a city where there is uh, more uh, entrepreneurial potential, there is, there is more creation, and you were saying in Bangalore it's more execution basically, yeah. right? Okay. I think it's interesting that in this regard, San Francisco is the home of boot camps. Like yeah, yeah. all bootcamps were born, uh, the idea of uh, coding bootcamps was born in San Francisco. Uh, it's where most bootcamps uh, were grown and in the past three years have uh, flourished in the industry. And I think Ironhack was an was a early uh, bootcamp here in Europe, yeah. uh, I think one of the first ones to start. We started in June this year, uh, although we're like building on the shoulder of giants as we're taking from the best practices of of uh, Silicon Valley's past bootcamps. Uh, but I think what is interesting is that, so this creativity, this cap capacity to create, transcends uh, somewhat um, the, uh, only the education field, and, and it's more embedded in society, and it's more like it's related to many things, access to capital, culture, these things. Uh, but if you want to look for some sort of correlation, there are no many bootcamps in Bangalore and there are many bootcamps in San Francisco. So at least I think it's fair to say that bootcamps do not hurt this process. No, uh, if no, you look at, at if all. you look if you look at the outcome, it's it's almost the opposite. They support this process in a way. Is it is it bootcamps are the only one who are able to create this book? Absolutely not. University and bootcamps, and I think this this is where I wanted to like kind of close this little 
um, comment, kind of recapping what I was hearing earlier. Um, I don't think there is a fight between bootcamp. I'm, I'm sorry, because I, I know I know the, the the podcast is probably about like bootcamps yeah. versus versus university. I don't think there is a fight between bootcamps and universities. I think the two of them uh, coexist very well in a healthy in a healthy system, uh, and they serve different purposes. Um, if someone, as from the perspective of a student, if a student wants to take a few years in his life or her life. Um, and uh, explore explore uh, this field like computer science. Wander around, take take even breaks because they have like breaks in the summer. They have time to explore, even as a life experience without just a pure studying. It's something they can only do at university, right? That's something that lasts for three years. They can do Erasmus. They have time to like really dig into some topics if they're interested outside of the curriculum, etc. On the other hand, sometimes universities fail at currently at preparing students uh, with some practical tools that they will need in at their job, like when they start from day one. Um, and this is where bootcamps shine. Bootcamps shine in uh, preparing someone in three months. If if someone wants to like, um, you know, like change their career and say like I want to get. Um, a career in software engineering, but I have a different background. I don't want to go back to university and study for another three years. Uh, or I want to, I've been already web developing a little bit, what some websites, some things, I want to level it up and become an engineer quick. This is, this is what bootcamps do. They offer opportunities for smart people to get in a position where uh, they can be productive and, and they can get a good job in software engineering real fast, real fast. Now, during this uh, amount of time, which for Ironac is two months, for us is three months, two slightly different courses, but the overall concept uh, has a lot of things in common. They don't have much free time, right? It's super, super intense. In the case that's of code, the point of a bootcamp. Yeah, and that's the point of a bootcamp. The case of CodeWorks is eleven hours a day, six days a week. There is no Erasmus. There is no, you know, that there is nine hundred and eighty hours of studying in three months. That's like a master, like a year master in three months. Um, so different experiences. Um, if uh, we need engineers that have stronger theoretical knowledge, we need them in the industry. Uh, every team needs them, especially in some sectors like artificial intelligence, big data. Uh, these engineers are more likely to come from universities. That's true. Like I'm not going to pretend that bootcamps are good at forming this type of engineers because this type of studying requires years. It's not something you can compress in three months. Uh, mostly, they would benefit from doing a master, doing a PhD. So maybe after eight, nine years of study, you can come up with some guys who's really good at artificial intelligence. It's not something you can do in three months. They can get started with these topics. They can start to play with it, and then they can pursue a career, keep studying, maybe do a master. They can start with a bootcamp and then dig into it in the coming years, having a job, being paid, finding some time on the side to keep learning. And that's what stud our students do. But if they want to go straight into like being in the Google team for artificial intelligence, do a master, do a PhD, and apply for that. Study for nine years. That's the, the career path. And the industry needs this, and universities are really good at this. That's a clear message for you, for, for potential students that are listening now and, right. and, and wondering, OK, I right. want to be well, a developer. I want to work at Google uh, doing this amazing project. Well, I, 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 have a, uh, uh, I have an objection. First of all, I, I like very much your, your intervention. I agree 90% with everything. Yeah, that's <laughs> except, <laughs> except uh, for instance, uh, everything that you said about the, the industry and, uh, and boot camps, I completely agree. A university doesn't provide with the uh, with uh, actual uh, technical skills that uh, industry needs because it, it it moves in another cycle of of upgrading. Yeah. But my point of view is that right now uh, it's true that university can provide with experience, and this experience is good for the person because if you take one boy or a girl of 18 years old the four years that he's going to spend in the university, it's, 
it's uh, it's really important for them for for mature because it right. it has nothing to do a person of twenty four years old and a, a and a person of eighteen years old. Uh, right, it's, right. You, you're also already a, t- a teenager, and these years you better be in the university or somewhere else. But you can do uh, be traveling or or doing something else. I agree. Yeah, the, that's, and that's why the I mentioned problem, the, the life yeah, experience. Yeah, yeah, the life experience, uh, and I I like very much the, the life experience in the university, and that's for instance one of the the reasons because I came back to you know to the yeah. university when I was working. I, yeah. I remember the the first day that I was working in a company, and my friends called me to the university. Today we have a party. And I was no, I want to come, and I was in, uh, I, I was coding in the company. Say, oh, right. no, I want to go back to university, right. and I went uh, ten years later. The problem that we have now is that university doesn't have the exclusive, the exclusivity to all this knowledge that we need to become a well-rounded engineer. And the problem is that we have the wrong incentives in, uh, in the in the academic uh, academic staff. We have a really old institution, really old, sometimes really old, sometimes centuries old, uh, half a millennia in, in in some universities that and with some power structures, some some practices. And what we have now is that university was designed for a time where you went, you got education you got training and you were set for life and this is not longer no longer true so how will the universities the, evolve yeah. in the in the future the university we, in the university we have a big problem right now because there's internet there's MOOCs there's online learning there's boot camps there's a lot of things that are competing with us to get a good job but the problem is how are we going to get well rounded professionals yeah, it's not a problem. For, uh, I, I think right now it's not a problem that that is going to be fixed in the university. Right, it's going to be fixed in the culture because we are in a scenario of long line learning. Yeah, when we can get training from boot camps and we can uh, and in things uh, where places like in boot camps or co workers and even in the university we're going to get networks of uh, people that we know where we are going to be learning all the time. My problem that I have also is that. I have seen some startups in incubators where they get some guy, they put it, they put him through a bootcamp and they tell him, okay, you can build your startup and now you are CTO. And they always screw up. You cannot become a CTO with just a bootcamp. Because, yeah. because you know can how I, to yeah, use can, a can tool. Can I say something? Yeah, we need to Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, there are so many things on the table that I'm I'm trying to go to in, 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 in somewhat in some order. So let's go with the CDO first. I think this is very related to university mentality versus uh, bootcamps mentality. Um, okay, if you're talking about an established business uh, with a large scale of operations, I don't think that a person that's coming straight out of a bootcamp would be the best candidate to be a CDO. No doubt. Like that's it. If you're uh, like Airbnb, your CDO should not come straight out of the bootcamp. No, but like, or the CDO Twitter. There, or like, I think also yeah. has like sorry, but it has like uh, I don't know. The the main part of his job is not just about coding, but also mentoring their Experience, employees. So many things. Uh, so many recruiting. things. Recruiting. Right. So I don't know. The guy has yeah. to be technical. Yeah. Absolutely. But the main traits, I think. Are on lay on the soft skills, so I don't think we can provide that. Well, in yeah, a way. it's, it's so a mix, it's exactly. a mix of both things. But I think there is this is the point I was trying to make. There's something that kind of stuck to my mind about what Mark was saying. It's like because they he said because they would fail hard, and actually they are failing hard. Or they are, failing, a lot of they them. are, or they have failed hard. Okay, I'm really glad about this on one side. Don't get me wrong, but I, I know that what I'm saying is slightly controversial. It depends on situation per situation, but I think this is extremely good and proves the fact that bootcamps are useful. Um, the best professionals in all sectors, this is not programming, this is life, are people who fail hard. They know what it means to fail. What makes the US economy strong is that they fail hard and they fail fast and they're not scared to and they learn a ton from failing. All the best entrepreneurs I've met in the US failed really hard several times before making it. 
Some just didn't make it. Some fail, 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 learn, and eventually made it big. Now, for example, I'm not saying this is true or this is not true, but if universities don't allow you to fail, you miss a learning opportunity. Yeah. Is, does that mean that then universities should not teach you things so you fail and then so you learn? No, I'm not saying this. I'm not saying, I'm just saying failing per se is not necessarily something that is absolutely bad. And I think a CTO, a good CTO, must have made some mistakes. If I were to hire a CTO, and, and when, when, when we hire collaborators, we ask them what their successes are, but I want to know about their failures. If they have not failed, they've not failed hard, and they don't know what it means to fail, and they have not learned from it, I'm scared. These guys have no idea what failure is. It's a bad collaborator. So we have hacker schools on the, on the one side, that's like a three, two or three months program, and you're learning one very specific thing, right, for that period of time? Well, several specific things, yeah, but yeah. several yeah. specific things. I mean, we do, we do data structures, yeah. we study algorithm complexity. But compared we go to universities, to, there's, it's pretty specific, I don't know, compared to like a four-year program, I, I would we, say. We actually did, specific. we did a comparison from our, between our curriculum and university, and I think one of the main things that we don't do, for example, we don't dig deep, deep into operating systems, like university does, mm -hmm. I think Arol would be would be glad because he was he was working on that on that summary. But if you compare if you compare, we have if if students or, or listeners are interested, just get in touch with us and we can provide them a comparison of uh, what is the typical uh, three four years university curriculum, what is the topics that are taught yeah. in there, and the difference between that and what we teach. There are some topics that we don't dig too much into, but many of them and what we think are the core ones, we actually cover. So we talk about data structures, we talk about algorithms, algorithms complexity, complexity analysis. Uh, you know, we, we talk about all the, the, the language structure and, and then architects, software architecture. Yeah, but for instance. For so we, we actually cover quite a lot of topics yeah, that are- we'll, we'll uh, have schools and for universities in, no, but move, for move it's, towards uh, for instance, each other than uh, the, the next year. For that's, instance, that's what uh, I'm talking about topics, uh, <laughs> it, it, and not to, and not, and not to, the, not to defend the, I, I think the university is, is, is in, in deep trouble. And I, I, I'm in, in the university <laughs> and I'm really concerned about it right, because yeah. my job, right. so okay. we can, uh, and. Uh, uh, and I think but that right now... You, you can always come to boot camps later. Yeah, no, well, <laughs> I, I can come to teach to, to boot camps, maybe. Uh, uh, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an opportunity, it, it's an opportunity maybe. Uh, for instance, in the university, I learned how to code in assembler. Yeah. And maybe now it's a, a, a skill that is not doesn't matter, but I think that it does. I think it's a perfect example. Yeah. Let's, let's, and, let's start from this, like assembler. No. Okay, some engineers need to know that. Assembler. But, right. But we have a startup that it's coming up with a product and needs to have a we operating website or a mobile app out in the market testing their assumption in three months. How assembler is useful for them? Depend. No, no, I, I know. I, I'm, I'm making this no, no, question. In, in, this, in, I, in this case, uh, so in, let's let's take for no, a no, second no. to discuss. How, how is assembler useful to them? I I'm not saying argue. assembler is never useful. I'm, I'm just not arguing. I, I'm not arguing with the with the um, with the necessity of boot camps and the uh, and and it's useful. I'm talking about the CTO level. Uh, but even for a CTO no, of such a startup, a, how, how is me, assembler useful for them? Like, I don't think honestly that. For a CTO of such a startup, would Assembler be useful? If you are working in Western Digital or Seagate and you're writing drivers for hard drives, then Assembler is super useful for you. Then you should learn about it. You should know about it. That's super relevant for your job. The, uh, it depends. For, for instance, uh, the, I, I, I don't remember the name. The company that now is the, uh, the leading company in, in containers for cloud computing, it's, it's Docker. A, uh, Docker. 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 Yeah. Docker it, it was not a, comp uh, a company. Uh, making containers, they were providing another service. Right. But they, uh, they had a deep knowledge of operating systems. Right. I don't know if uh, uh, and, and how and, uh, and how uh, yeah, that's and, it. and, it's, it's, and it's how to build it. And they and they had this pro uh, and they right. had this problem. They solved it in a in a so good way. But that's a perfect. A so that's a perfect example. That they created yeah. a new that's, that's a perfect example. It's also a great example that's because a it's example. a company that has built on top of open source. But then the layers are stacking yeah. up, and I'm sure they're hiring a lot of developers, right? But in the in the top of the layer. So I'm those. I'm sure they don't have a clue about the similar. 
I think I no, think that's um, I okay. I let's let's assemble, let's I don't, I don't think assemble because it's it's really far in the past. No, but, yeah, yeah, but no, assemble. I mean, but I think operating systems, building compilers, how to develop yeah. a database. I think I think Docker is a perfect example. Can we just just say something about Docker? Docker, first of all, it's a rare example. Uh, it's it's out of in the if you look at the ecosystem of startups, is one of the few that is. A, Focusing, it's it's uh, it's consumer and business facing, so it's not hardware, it's software, and it's uh, focusing on low level technology. Okay, so they are very close to the operating system. Okay, so it's a rare example. Out of all the universe of startups, there are not many startups there or, or or companies that are working with this level of technology. But even within Docker, even within Docker, they will need some people who have a PhD and have studied like very deeply how operating system works. Within their team, they will need people who have studied assembly and, and understand how this works and deal with very low level operating systems, probably in their back end team. Okay, so they need it. And where are they going to get these developers? From universities. Or, the, or, or boot camps, if, if you they have, have some. But yeah, I, I, now there are boot camps on machine learning, for instance. Yeah, yeah, okay, but let's say. In the most but, common, in the most yeah, common case, in the so most common, you can learn. But in the most common, in the, in the CTO level, just just to wrap just yeah. wrap this up for a second, in the uh, even within Docker, they have a client facing like they have they have they have uh, they have a website, they have an interface that the client facing with, uh, they have uh, an API. Yeah, all these things can are needed. They need to hire people. They don't want someone with a PhD and, and knowledge in assembly to build this. They want someone who uh, has experience with uh, Ruby and Rails or, or Node and Angular, React, like all these frameworks. They need this. So that's the perfect example of the fact that both things no, no. coexist and I they serve agree. different purposes. <laughs> I agree with that. And to, wrap, and to wrap this up, because I think we're running out of time, and in the interest of who's listening to this, I think one of the questions that's actually useful to ask for people is like, um, how much time do I want to invest in my studying career? And when do I want to start working and where? I think these are like very useful questions if you need to figure out if you want to do university or if you want to do, because this podcast in the end, I guess, it's for people who wonder, should I do one yeah. or should I do the other? Right. So I, I'm trying to say, like, what could useful question be? It's like, okay, when do I want to start working? Do I want to start working in four years? And it's cool, and because I want to take this time to explore and go for a university, don't go for a boot camp. Do I want to start working in three months, four months, five months? Go to a boot camp, then no. a university is not, it's not the place to be. And, and I think you were saying something about students who are 18 or 19. But many students at boot camps are not 18 or 19. They're maybe 23, 24, yeah, 25. These people don't necessarily want to go back to university and do another three, four years need. before they get a job. So that's why we have different situations. There is a lot of talent out there that it's perfectly capable to like, you know, get a great job in engineering. And I think boot camps are helping a lot with this. Absolutely. So uh, we're running out of time. As I said, it has been a good, a good discussion. Uh, we agree on a lot and, and some things we, we don't agree on and, and that's the way it needs to be. Uh, it will be very interesting to, to, to follow, to see the future, how both the universities and boot camps evolve uh, the next years. Uh, but thank you so much, everyone, uh, for being here. Uh, Marc Allier from UPC, uh, Marc Collado from Ironhack, we have uh, Alessandro uh, Sanardi from uh, Codeworks and also Arol uh, Vignolas from, uh, <laughs> from, from Codeworks. Vignolas. <laughs> Vignolas. Thank yeah. you so much for being here. Uh, and this was the Ethnic podcast, the first one.